Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I'm a little nervous. I'm coming, I'm late. I'm late to pick up Sammy the Bull Gravano. When I was living in New York, he was the underboss of the most powerful crime family in the United States, maybe the world. I'm gonna pick him up. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what he wants to do. Maybe he wants to grab coffee. Maybe he wants to grab lunch. Maybe he wants to grab a workout. I have no idea. I'm gonna have a great dinner at an amazing restaurant called Via Veneto. For my money, best Italian food I've ever had in my life. I'm gonna take him to the private dining room. I'm gonna gift him a pair of custom-made toehold flip-flops that say the bull on them. I'm pulling out all the stops because I'm afraid not to. And at dinner, I might have a couple surprises for you. I hope that I don't start speaking like I'm from New York. And now I'm already talking like this, like I was born and raised in Brooklyn, in Bensonhurst, which I wasn't. But my mother was. I'm not a mafia buff, but I feel like he's the only gangster that I'm actually interested in talking to. I don't approve of the lifestyle. I don't approve of organized crime. I don't approve of any of that stuff. I guess my instinct was listening to Our Thing, his podcast, the way he tells stories, the Judeo-Christian framework that these stories sort of occur in, this notion of right and wrong, good and bad, was very interesting to me. I just found myself rooting for the guy, and I want to know why I was. I want to know why that was the case. Sammy the Bull Gravano. I, I just can't believe, I, 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 I can't believe I'm picking him up. Brian Callen, a sometimes working actor slash comedian. Peter Pan fuck off. And somehow I'm picking him up. Here's the good news, we're not late. I'm excited. Just landed. This is gonna be, we got, we got you covered. The whole, the whole, whatever you need. We're gonna go to dinner tonight. Right now we'll drive back to the hotel or what, if you wanna eat something or grab coffee, we can do whatever you want. We can shoot it, we don't have to shoot it. Whatever you want. Red long hair, green <laughs> eyes. I got gotcha. you. We're gonna do that little skit. I love that. Yeah, skit. we're gonna do that skit. You gotta understand. I, I when I my mother's from Brooklyn, from Bensonhurst. Yeah. But I remember being in New York when you were running the whole town, and Absolutely. so the, some of these younger guys don't understand what this is about. You ever think you should put your seatbelt on? Never, never in a million years. Uh, I mean, right there. where the fuck is this shoulder strap? Okay. They got shoulder straps now. Yeah. yeah. How long were you away? Twenty years, right? A little, 17 years, seven months, 18 years straight. I feel like the mob got crippled because of everybody's got a camera and, and everything's electronic, right? I mean, yeah. am I wrong? No, no, you're right. I mean, how, how would you get away with anything? You can't, today, you could never do anything. Today, though, you can't, they, they got to be crazy. You miss the juice? <sighs> no. You don't? No, I really don't. I remember when I listened to you tell the story, you were talking, I think you were being interviewed, and I thought to myself, this guy can tell a story. You, you, the, uh, the way you structure a story is very interesting. It's very difficult to do. When you hear the Johnny Keith story, they want to actually make a movie of that. It's one of the greatest stories I've ever heard in my life. I said, Paul, last night I killed the epitome of our life. I feel dirty. I don't feel good about this at all. This guy should have been the boss. You had to see what things he's done. I don't ever think I'll forget this guy. He's gonna be under my skin for the rest of my fucking life. He and he's affected you. I said, affected me? I fell in love with him. I love him. He says, what balls to tell me something like that? Don't ever change, Sammy. Don't change. I'm not just telling the story to get uh, hits or, or subscribers or money. I'm, this is fucking yeah. part of me. But when you tell that story, the, the reason it's powerful is everybody who listens to it believes you. I was a thug all my life out of school in gangs. Because they told you you were dumb. Them. You, I just didn't give a fuck no more. Because you, you thought, people told you you were dumb, so you didn't have any options. More or less, more or less, I mean, uh, that's what mo put me in a gang. That's what made me start fighting as, at a young age. You know, somebody would get uh, a, a word, uh, uh, anti, uh, whatever the fuck the word may be, it's a big word, somebody's spelling it. Okay, Gravano, spell cat. And everybody would giggle. Ah, oh, fuck. So I was that like, and I was, I, was a that cute, anger. I was a cute kid, and I liked the little girls, and, and I was so embarrassed and so belittled and so, angry that 
come two, three o'clock when we were getting out of school, that guy who was laughing the hyena, I'm gonna break his fucking face. And I realized that, well, fear works a little bit. When I was in New York and I would eat, I would eat uh, dinner at a place called Cafe Sorrento and the Ravenite Club was right next door, like two doors down. And you'd see those guys come in. And as a young man, you want to be a tough guy. And then you'd see those knuckle breakers come out of that, that club and you'd be like, oh, oh, well, I'm definitely not, definitely not a knuckle breaker. Oh, oh this guy, uh, Paul Snyder, he was called uh, corn fed, like a farmer. Big, oh, fucking 6263, six, huge, just naturally. And he has four life sentences, killed guys in prison with the ABs, left and right. And I used to play chess with him through the wall. So I asked him one time, why don't you come in the yard? He says, I can't get in unless somebody signs me in. What do you mean? If somebody will take a risk and sign me in, then I could go in the yard. That, that, but everybody don't want to go in the yard with me. Yeah. So I can't go in alone. The lieutenant passed by. I says, oh, you're lieutenant. Come here. I said, uh, you're going to have uh, the yard tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. I want to go in the yard with uh, Confet. You crazy, Sammy. <laughs> he said, are you crazy or what? You know his record? Yeah, I do. And I know he's got four life sentences. I want to go in the yard with him. I play chess with him. I want to sit in the yard. Yeah. All right. So I yelled to him. He knew. The next day, we, we go in the yard. He went first. So he goes in, sunny day like this. Shirt is off. He's in the back. The sun is glowing on him. I mean, he's fucking ripped. Oh, my God. So now I'm coming, I'm cuffed, and I'm gonna go in the yard. So when I get in the yard and they put my hands backwards to uncuff, and I'm looking at him, he's way in the distance. I said, I hope this ain't a mistake. This fucking guy is huge. So they took the cuffs off. So now I'm going and I'm walking towards him and he's walking towards me and he gets close and he puts his hands like this. He's so much bigger than me. He puts his hand, he grabs my head and he kisses me on the fucking head. Sammy the Bull also comes and his parents, they, they came from a part of Brooklyn where my mother and my grandparents were, were born and raised. I would listen to him talk, I, I, I could hear my grandfather, I could hear my great grandfather, I could hear my aunts, my uncles, I could hear even my mother. He had very legitimate parents, good people who definitely didn't approve of mafia stuff, Italian conservative value system. He is a walking enigma. I appreciate you guys. I mean, this beach, beautiful fucking women. I'm in California. I'm not sure if I should give them a kiss because they give me this day. Oh, I don't know what to do. From the hole oh to, my God. to the beach. This has made my day, my week, my month, and my year. We were the most powerful family in the country. I'll give you one of the reasons why. When we did the Castellano hit, Castellano was the boss of bosses of all, the whole commission, and we took him out. We did it at 5.30, 6 o'clock at night in Manhattan. Now, hold on, very, let me, before you go on, there's a very important question. You guys took Castellano out during Christmas in New York City, 6 o'clock, where there were way more people than here. It was New York uh, during Christmas time is families, it's insanely busy. It's crazy, there are cops literally on every corner. Why in the hell would you take Castellano out at Sparks Steakhouse, which again, was full, sold out. You're gonna take him out on the street where you know everybody's gonna come down on you. We worked on this hit for eight months and couldn't get a spot for it. Not his house, not outside his house? No, we're not gonna kill him at his house. I will refuse to do that. Because that, because his family his was there. His wife and his kids and people, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. John Gotti said what you said, who knows? Fuck, we'll do that, it's been insane. Manhattan during Christmas is jam-packed. 5.30, all the buildings empty out with the people. Instead of going home, they stay there because their families are gonna come, go out to dinner, go Christmas shopping. But also the streets. So the streets are cars. Are, are cars, people, 
everything. So I said, that's exactly why we should do it. The confusion, the people, it'll be insane. Nobody will know what the fuck is going on. We may die, but we're going to do this hit. We're going to kill them. We're going to go down in history. Fear is what made us win. There's nobody who talks more jive than Italian guys from New York. That's, that's an art. I don't care. Brooklyn guys, New York, Italian guys, nobody speaks like they got to tell you who they are, where they're from, what they're going to do to you, who they know. It's so beautiful before they fight. They'll be like, bro, you want to fight me? You know who I am, bro? You want to fight this guy who wants to fight me and getting his titties all twisted up? Bro, do yourself a favor. Do yourself, go home, drink a warm glass of milk, take a nap, and go to mass, all right? I'll slap you so hard, I'll kill your dog, all right? Bang, your dog out. Like that. I kill my dog. I'm gonna slap my dog, bro. You can slap me, bro. You can put a hand on me. You know who I am? You're gonna put your hand on me. You know who I am? You know how many people I know, bro? You put your hand, you look at me wrong. Never mind, slap me. You look at me wrong, bro. I make two phone calls, bro. Two phone calls. You go away in the morning tomorrow. Your whole family's working in a circus, bro. Your dad's a clown. He's throwing pies in his own face. Your mother's a fat lady. You know that, right? You know she gets the job. No resume. She walks in, she gets the job. You know that, right? Yo, how long does it take your sister to grow a beard? About two days. We throw up on a stump, we charge $2 to look at it, y'all hump. You gotta talk about my family? No, you talk about my family, you bring my family into this shit, bro? Bro, two phone calls, you, you know who I am? You know how many people I, bro, two phone calls, you think you know people, bro? Listen to me right now, I made one phone call, bro. One phone call, I don't gotta make a phone, I text, I just text. <laughs> you go away, tomorrow your house, your domicile is a car wash. Your mother's washing my car like this. Topless, her tits are slapping around. I don't tip her.